Continuing with the insightful discussions for the day, we uh, would like to progress to the next session, which is on core infrastructure. And um, a very interesting title, once again, Power of Choice, Separation of Carriage and Content. And we have some of the stalwarts from the field with us today. We are extremely honored to have all of you with us. May I please request the panel curator for the session, Sri Somesh Kumar, partner and head, Power and Utilities, Ernst & Young, to please join us on stage. Welcome, sir. Please join me in welcoming some of the most esteemed panelists uh, who are here with us today. Sri S.K. Soni, advisor, Posoko Power Sector Professional. Sri Ajay Nirula, COO, Island FS. Mr. Antonio Volpin, Director McKenzie. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Mr. Kumar, the stage is all yours. Uh, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here and uh, moderate this session. Uh, this is, uh, as Shrimoy said, is a, is a very, very interesting session uh, which holds the promise to actually be the next stage of uh, major reforms in the power sector. Uh, it actually talks about uh, segregating the content part from the carriage part. So carriage being the network and content being the supply of power. Uh, traditionally, uh, you know, both the two things have been uh, bundled together. We've never, uh, as a consumer, we've never thought of uh, network being separate from supply. We get power from one utility, which, is, which, which uh, builds the network as well as supplies power to us. So can they really be uh, separated out? Can we have two providers to us, one actually uh, getting the network to our houses and the other one actually supplying the power? So this is the topic all about. And uh, I'm very, very honored and privileged to have uh, very eminent panelists with me today, some of the uh, senior most stalwarts of the industry. Uh, as Shrimo introduced, uh, I would just once again introduce the panelists. Uh, First of all, I have uh, Mr. Sony, uh, who was the head of Posoko and virtually running the entire dispatch of power in the country. Now he's uh, a senior advisor with Posoko. Uh, we have Mr. Nirula. Uh, he has been at the helm of affairs of, uh, of Tata Power uh, distribution company in Delhi. And now he is the chief operating officer at uh, ILFS Energy. Uh, and we have Mr. Antonio. Uh, he uh, leads the power practice for uh, McKinsey uh, and is based at Singapore and uh, you know, he's here specially for this uh, event. So thank you so much, uh, sirs, for joining us for today. Uh, as we all know uh, that <coughs> power is a subject uh, you know, which is uh, extremely uh, political in many ways and it also is complex, it's not that easy. Uh, so, uh, you know, segregating uh, uh, content from carriage is something uh, which has been talked about by the legislators, by uh, various regulators, uh, you know, various institutions in the country at different levels. We've also seen some draft legislation uh, about it, but it's still not seen light of the day. We've not seen the legislation coming into picture right now. So uh, really the debate is all about, is it something which is good for India? Is it something which we should really be doing? Uh, we have some international experience around that. Uh, there are countries around the world which have implemented this uh, in various forms and manners. So is India really uh, uh, going to benefit from this? Is it really doable? Is it beneficial for the country? And if yes, then you know, what are the kinds of issues or challenges that we will face and how can we deal with those? So this is the outline or the context for the topic for today. Uh, I would like to uh, start the discussion uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Sony. And uh, you know, just asking if you can set the context for uh, this kind of segregation, since this is an infra conclave. So you know, some perspective on sir, how uh, do you see power vis-a-vis -vis other sectors in terms of segregating carriage and content and some views regarding that. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, subject very close to my heart. Uh, so let me start with, you know, Alice in Wonderland, Louis Carroll. <clears throat> there is a song, there is a, a name of the song and the way the song is sung. 
there is an address and there is an address where the address has been kept so these all have to be segregated and uh, carriage and content very easily said but very difficult to appreciate but one thing is coming to the subject itself on the transmission uh, and the wire business when we come to distribution it is uh, infrastructure of infrastructure of infrastructure and uh, we got to get it right and use it uh, in a most optimal way and that's where the thing starts what is put under competition and what is not put under competition the natural resources cannot be put under competition and hence they must be segregated and the what can be put under competition is the content part of it so natural monopoly transmission is there but uh, I would quickly jump to the cybernetics part of it we just had a discussion uh, we should be thinking in terms of railways airports ports even gas yeah, the gas pipeline and the content should have been separated long back elsewhere it has been done but in this country still to be done so once we have that then we would have choice and freedom and then of course the competition so as far as the interstate transmission is concerned in the last decade or so uh, it has been separated completely and uh, now we have a common carrier you have open access the term open access can only come provided you have separation of carriage and content and uh, there has to be a very solid policy pronouncement a commitment to do that and once we have that then of course the regulation comes into picture because uh, if what is not under competition has to be regulated and then of course you will need people like us who will do system operation be it of water grid or be it of gas grid or uh, uh, other things so that's something which uh, matures as the open access and separation takes place so basically functional separation then you get into organizational separation and finally the clinical separation the whole process is very time consuming it's uh, almost a societal change uh, in my opinion nothing less than a decade takes place from concept to delivery for such changes and uh, the experience of uh, carriage and content separation in transmission uh, we should look at what we learn is it complete in true sense have we been able to make common carrier how do we uh, get the infrastructure built after it is separated how it, the cost is shared for example point of connection tariff which we have in transmission so all those things in a somewhere or other we have to map it onto the distribution so it's going to be a um, long battle uh, not very uh, simple to do and on top of that we have, have to build our market structure once you separate then the retailers must have the access to the market then only it's worth doing it having said all these things in a jumbled way not very clarity of thought is not there but uh, consumer will probably force us to go for carriage and content separation the way the solar is coming in the embedded the prosumers will probably force us to do that and uh, certainly we should have policy we should have regulation we should have such discussions and uh, uh, capacity building at every level be it of uh, wire business people be it of generators be it of market designer and of course the regulators so that's how I will yeah. put it thank sure. you Thank you so much, sir. I think uh, that's a very valid point. I think the point that you made is uh, we should look at the experience of transmission where uh, the segregation has been made. We see a lot many players, private sector coming in uh, far more efficiently, far more uh, resource effectively, uh, and use that for distribution network as well. And uh, there are, of course, policy challenges and various implementation challenges. Uh, that really uh, takes me to the next point, and I would request uh, Mr. Nirula to give his opening comments on whether uh, you see that the, this, this uh, segregation being something beneficial for India, whether the consumers will really benefit. Uh, so what is your view on that? Uh, good morning, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with you. Yes, this is a new topic. I uh, Definitely we know that... Uh, uh, carriage and content separation has not taken place uh, anywhere in India. So, uh, good to, and it's a very big bang item. Uh, it's not something easy because distribution side has always been uh, somewhere far away from our minds, but now it is on the top of the agenda everywhere. You hear about Uday and you hear about so many things happening uh, on the distribution front. 
So I am glad. In, in many of these conferences, the first item that used to be discur, dis, uh, discussed was uh, generation or transmission. And finally, end of the day, when there are very few people, you would come to the distribution side of it. But I think the whole thing has got reversed. Uh, just a couple of anecdotes. Uh, when I was with Tata Power Daily Distribution here, uh, we used to get a lot of calls uh, in the night. Uh, this is not there. This is not happening. And consumers knew our uh, mobile numbers. Uh, they knew the numbers, so they could call up at any point of time. And I remember having uh, got calls almost daily uh, by some consumer or the other. And uh, I asked my counterpart on the BSCS side, how do you deal with this? Consumer uh, service and consumer dealing has its own art. So he says, the first thing I respond to the consumer, I know he's very angry. He doesn't have power at his house. So he's very angry. So the first thing I tell him, hold on. I don't have power. I am searching for a candle. And that uh, two lines, you know, cools him down. And then I listen and then, you know, we can sort it out. So I think listening to the consumer voice and uh, knowing what the consumers want is uh, very, very critical. Uh, another thing uh, which comes across is that in the distribution segment, there are many stakeholders. Uh, there's the government, there's the uh, regulator, there is... Uh, uh, you know, all, all the consumers around you. And uh, so how do you deal with that? I remember in one, there's the media as well. And I remember there was one person who was very, very critical of what we used to do from the media. And he would write a lot of articles. And one day he wrote uh, a very nasty mail, marked to Mr. Tata in Bombay also, and uh, said that this is not happening, that is not happening, you people are. And I... Uh, talk to your call center, the call center didn't respond, and things like that. And uh, finally, uh, we also got a call from Mr. Tata's office, uh, what's happening? And uh, I remember we, but we had invested a lot in the IT part of it, which is what I'm uh, giving you as a context, that IT and OT technologies, operations technology and information technology plays a major role. And so we got out the recording of the uh, interaction of this media person with our call center. And, it, and the, uh, to our surprise, it was absolutely the reverse. The media person was very, very uh, you know, rude and very, very uh, unfair to the call center executive. And the call center executive happened to be a lady who uh, uh, was at a loss how to deal with this situation and finally hung up. So we got the recording and we called the media person, we said, please come to our office and we will be sorry, we, are, we want to apologize. And uh, when we got him to our office, uh, we played out the recording to him. And the person uh, was shocked. And uh, we said, all right, I, we hope uh, we can resolve the problem, but this is the reality. And uh, the person went back and uh, one spin-off benefit we never realized but it happened was that the person no longer wrote any nasty uh, articles about us or complained about certain things. But the reality is that you've got to deal with everything and certain IT and uh, OT operations technologies play a major role. Uh, coming back to uh, this whole area of carriage and content, I think the uh, few key points I will make and then uh, you know my, uh, uh, the person who's on my right, a very learned person, will give you something on the international side of the whole thing. Uh, I think the legislative uh, intent is very clear. The Electricity Amendment 2014 Act, uh, which is uh, going to be cleared, uh, which is still before Parliament, is very clear that <coughs> carriage and content separation and how it is to be done. But then the second part is also very important in the Indian context. The states have to play a major role. And when it comes at state level, we see different kinds of maturity levels on handling this. And this is a big ticket reform. So I have a feeling it will go along the way you've seen privatization of discoms go along. Some states very advanced, some states uh, grappling with it, some states still uh, way behind. Uh, so this is one part of it. I think the regulators, the state regulator will also play a major role in that. So the forum of regulators, which is there as a body, which consults each other, I think that forum of regulators will also uh, play a role in uh, homogenizing and uh, listing out the way forward in this uh, carriage and content separation part. Uh, of course, uh, we have to look at the experiences of countries outside where it has happened. We know in UK it took 10 years. Uh, 
uh, for this uh, carriage and content separation to really come back and you know be effective. Um, and the reason for this long period is that there are it is done in stages and it is there are many stakeholders starting from the highest category of uh, people who are uh, you know given this benefit of uh, carriage and content separation. And coming back to uh, some few other things, um, where are we in terms of uh, the ATNC loss levels? That will decide the strategy for each discom on how to do that. And I think uh, why I'm listing out some of these things is that outside countries, uh, they have not really had to deal with this kind of a phenomena of high ATNC loss uh, levels when this carriage and content separation has taken place. So we will have to have two strategies, I think, at some places I have seen less than 15% another strategy and more than 15% another strategy of how to deal with it. What is the level of automation? Um, I think that is also very important, the maturity of automation. Uh, do they have a robust ERP, uh, the SAP uh, enablements, the uh, CCS, the CRMs in place? Uh, what are the other technologies like um, GIS, uh, SCADA, OMS, the outage management systems? and so on. And how are these integrated with each other so that when you are going to switch over to a new system, the switching over is seamless and pain less or minimum painful for the consumers. So that I think will play a major role in that. And of course the automated uh, metering infrastructure at the end point, uh, which is the talking uh, uh, element with the consumer, how that is uh, and where are we in that implementation. So every state I think has a different uh, 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 perspective on this where they are. And uh, lastly, uh, I would also want to say that we have this new thing of renewables also coming in, the rooftop. So there are, there will be hundreds of consumers switching in and switching out. How does this impact and how do the IT systems, how are mature they are to enable and handling of these uh, changes in the uh, requirements of power as well as the supply and demand for power will keep, you know, uh, moving back and forth. And there will be peak uh, requirements uh, which will have to be taken care of. And you will have multiple retail suppliers. So the whole concept that currently seems to be is that from the wire side, there will be one supplier. And there will be multiple suppliers on the retail side to give you and me a choice to who that consumer can be. And uh, I have seen some um, discussions where states have come in. And there are uh, many states which have said, no, we don't want to do. Typical of our structure federal structure and there are some states who are very, very gung-ho and forward. But finally, I would say, look at places which are mature enough to handle this. And I think you don't have to go too far. Uh, there are utilities like uh, BSES, uh, Tata Power, uh, CESC, Torrent, and so on. And cities like Ahmedabad, Mumbai, Delhi, uh, which have a fairly uh, advanced system of uh, IT and OT uh, technologies. And I think they would be the places where we should, we should be starting from. And of course, there are other issues which uh, we will discuss uh, when time comes. Uh, but I think overall, it is a very uh, interesting phase and a very challenging phase. And we should not expect results which we do in the Indian context. I remember uh, the, the day the privatization took, took place, the next day we were asked, what are you doing? So <laughs> it, it has its own uh, time uh, horizon and patience levels but which I think we, can, we are now mature enough to handle. With these few words, I think I will pass on the baton yeah. to my neighbor. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Back sir. I think, uh, uh, I think the key point that you made is uh, that it is, uh, you know, indeed holds uh, promise for the consumers to benefit uh, in terms of customer service or uh, in terms of cost reduction. Uh, but each state is probably at a different level of maturity curve. So, you know, we cannot generalize and, you know, we have to see how to actually prioritize uh, the rollout of this, this uh, separation scheme. Uh, with that, uh, you know, I would turn to Antonio to, you know, give us some international perspective as to how this has happened in other countries. Has it really benefited the consumers and the sector at large? And uh, if so, then, you know, what were the enabling conditions uh, which actually made this happen? Uh, which could be similar to Indian scenario. Thank you. Uh, I think that in order to uh, assess the impact of the separation between uh, uh, content and carriage, uh, that is the, the, the regulation, the liberalization of the supply of energy, uh, we should be 
should be seen al along, uh, I think, three lenses. So quality of service, before and after. Uh, obviously, price, before and after. And uh, the choice that customers uh, have had before and after. So these are the, thing, are the three uh, di uh, dimensions, or the three performance indicators. In terms of customer service, uh, uh, I would say, of course, there are differences, uh, but if we look at the markets, uh, the regions that, our re that have uh, implemented this reform since uh, some uh, significant time, basically the whole of Europe, uh, most of the United States, and most of Australia, the quality of service has uh, improved hugely from a pre-deregulation uh, 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 phase. As the gentleman was saying, uh, the, uh, the customer care has improved uh, massively from the connection times uh, to the waiting time uh, at the uh, call centers uh, to how uh, consumers can pay to things like the uh, 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 cl clarity uh, and transparency of the bill, which uh, uh, in many uh, countries is a, major, is a major thing because the, the, the prices are very high and not always very clear. So quality of service, uh, I would say, is clearly a, a, a yes in terms of improvement. In terms of the price, or the cost of energy for final users, uh, I would say that the, uh, my uh, assessment is, is mixed. In uh, some countries, uh, there has been uh, an improvement particularly for certain segments like the large users and the medium-sized business. In other countries, much less. And uh, actually, the, there are many factors behind that, not uh, uh, last but not least. Uh, the also, uh, a big one is the how the incumbent retailers, uh, uh, the, the strength uh, and, the, and the brand awareness of that uh, incumbent. But one of the very important factor is the dynamic of the upstream sector, the generation or the gas supply market. Without a very liquid and very competitive generation market that can offer uh, different choices, and different options to uh, retailers, uh, experience from uh, all over the world suggests that uh, prices are not going down, are unlikely to go down. So if uh, the objective uh, of this reform in India is uh, uh, mostly or mainly to reduce prices to end users, uh, uh, the uh, separation of content and carriers uh, is a good step in that direction but there is neither the necessary, I mean, is the necessary condition, but definitely is not sufficient. Uh, the uh, competitiveness of the upstream sector is uh, uh, the real uh, necessary uh, factor behind that driver. Uh, third, in terms of choice, uh, depends a bit on the, on the prices, but that is another uh, area where the overall experience uh, has been very positive. Now customers uh, together with the energy supply can buy insurances, can buy, can buy services to their houses, can buy audit, energy audit uh, to their uh, buildings or uh, uh, businesses. Uh, they can buy a number of things uh, and they can pay in very different ways uh, with very different uh, tariff schemes uh, that are uh, better suited uh, to their consumption patterns uh, or their business uh, uh, interest. So uh, summarizing, uh, uh, quality of service, uh, price, uh, um, choice, two of these three factors are clearly, uh, I would say, uh, 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 overwhelming success wherever this reform has been implemented, quality of service, and uh, availability of cho different choices for uh, consumers. Price, uh, uh, mixed results, uh, key driver being the competitiveness of the generation market. Thank you, Antonio. I think uh, that's very relevant. So if you see uh, you, our 
outlined three aspects of benefits. So, uh, whether it is price, customer service, or choice, uh, you know, there have been positive benefits noted uh, in each of these three categories. Of course, in price, there have been varying levels across different geographies. Uh, even in terms of choice, various uh, services have been converged along with the power supply and you know more value added services being available or being made available to the consumers uh, so that's 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 a good indication of the international scenario um, having said that i think the indian market is uh, you know slightly different and unique in certain aspects uh, for instance we have a consumer mix which is very very differential we have highly subsidized consumers to highly subsidizing consumers uh, we have uh, long term PPAs varying between uh, very high cost ones and low cost ones and also at different vintage levels uh, and we, we are logged into those PPAs. So, if we have multiple suppliers coming in how do we allocate the consumers, how do we allocate the PPAs, you know there, there would be certain issues which are very very uh, unique to the Indian scenario I think. Uh, so, uh, you know I would request uh, Mr. Sony to uh, throw some light on you know some of these issues and you know what could be our uh, possible outlook on some of these uh, issues if we have to make this scheme a success. Actually, someday it will happen. When is a question. So the best is to start preparing for it. Now, how do we prepare ourselves for it? Uh, and certain basic things, let's say. Adequacy, which was hitherto a problem, is no more there. So, we have good ambience and the uh, e uh, ecosystem is good for such transitions. Uh, the second, I would say that we need uh, you know some champions to work for the cause. It could be institutions, it could be group of individuals, and that takes us to the capacity building uh, so that it's a fully thought through rather than uh, you know knee jerk and then we get into trouble that is another aspect. Uh, so for, uh, for example, one of the experience of uh, carriage content and unbundling at the bulk level, uh, the entire settlement system certainly becomes very complicated and uh, once we go for such choice and uh, uh, you know consumer changing and every entity in between number of uh, distribution wire business companies to be suitably compensated, the loss which Mr. Narula talked about and uh, who is buying from whom and uh, protecting the interest of everyone and coming with the right settlement system. To me it is a big job. We are even facing difficulty in terms of uh, uh, settlement system in interstate anybody is buying from anybody and for 15 minutes what should be the least count, how frequently one should change, uh, where does the law of diminishing return sets in, whether it is not worth doing it. So, we should borrow uh, you know ideas from what has been done in case of telecom, uh, how frequently should we change. Even in open access we have found that uh, in interstate should you allow that every one hour one can change, should you allow every day to be changed. Should it be for a month? Should it be for only peak period? So, you know, there are all such nuances. And then, of course, uh, handling transition. This uh, chapter has to be bigger than the main chapter. Uh, for example, uh, what do we do with grandfather PPAs? Where do we house them? And, um, you know, in, uh, should we start with the large consumers and then gradually go for it? And all, 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 all such uh, things are there. And uh, of course, uh, you know, it will, if one can't uh, uh, in the initial stages write down everything. It is to me, it is something like this, you know, it will be a net neutrality plus GST plus all these things combined together. Mm. So, that is the kind of a complexity which it will have and uh, one should start with a simple thing. But account separation, metering in place, having double entry systems. At least these things whether we go or not must be done, distribution system operator must be there. So, and the IT part of it, the, these things must be put in place and then gradually at the right moment it will happen that is how I would look at it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nirula any thoughts on similar where to begin, how to really implement 
uh, how to deal with these issues. I mean, we all know there are issues. Uh, yeah. Let me uh, give you a little perspective of how it was done in the UK and how we can also look at some of those things. Uh, what was the role of the regulator? So the role of the regulator was to minimize the charges, electricity and gas together. They, they did two things together, bundle the two services together, high service quality, environment protection, society benefit, support to low income groups. And what was the strategy followed? The strategy was followed, which they followed was regulation, uh, regulating the monopoly activities, uh, competitions, bringing in standards, creating partnerships and confidence among the consumers, and finally efficiency. So I think uh, there is a lot to understand on how it was done. And I, I would also add that end of the day, it took 10 years there, and end of the day there was a survey carried out, and they said that there were about 26 million consumers that were covered by this. And uh, uh, they, they were all subject to the mass marketing techniques, which we also see from telecom. So all the retail companies, you know, employed those marketing techniques, telecalling, this, that, and all that. The consumers were, in some ways, pretty angry also, pretty confused as well. And uh, in, in, in some ways, the range of tariffs that were offered, we all know what kind of telecom tariffs are offered. So the similar way, if you're offered an electricity tariff, how are you going to evaluate all that? A lot of confusion. And on top of that, or you need to be very, very uh, enlightened about how to evaluate what is good for you. And finally, uh, there was a minority, which was not uh, really a very minor, minor minority. It was a significant minority, which did not actually shift. So this issue of, and why did they shift? Because they were not clear on which plan is good for them. How many of us, you know, use this portability on the telecom sector? We have to be, very few of us are able to really evaluate. So I think uh, some of these issues are there which we have to learn from. And if we come to the other areas where, uh, specifically to the Indian context, you look at the, uh, there is a proposal, I believe, one of the uh, proposals is that you create an intermediary company. That intermediary company handles all the PPA issues. So uh, now PPAs also, we have gone through a kind of uh, evolution. PPA is 20, 25 years old. Today, there are many uh, capacities which are stranded because of no PPAs. Mm. So how do you deal with those PPAs? Because if you have a fixed PPA, the pricing mechanism also, to a large extent, there are certain pass-throughs and there are certain, there is a capacity charge and there is a variable charge. And you know that this is what is going to be the cost. So where does it bring in a reduction of cost? So I would... Uh, very tend, uh, you know, tend to agree with my neighbor here. He, he said that uh, cost has not been, uh, cost reduction has not been a very clear outcome of uh, carriage and content separation. So, PPAs, and secondly, if you have, say, 80% of the DISCOM, I remember here in Tata Power, 80% to 90% of your PPAs are fixed. So, how do you, uh, what is your potential to reduce cost out of that? So the balance portion, which is probably peaking power or some other kind of power, or certain PPAs which are expiring, which, which you go in for new power and new arrangements, and those kind of things can lead to some kind of reduction in the, uh, from the bulk side, from the generation side. But certain uh, benefits can come from the management of the uh, whole uh, processes and the systems. So I think uh, we need to have certain enablements that will take place. And consumer segmentation is another key issue. You see, traditionally we start with these uh, phased uh, implementation and you look at consumers above one megawatt. Now they are highly subsidizing consumers. So the cross-subsidy element comes into a major uh, you know, area where you've got to deal with it. So if you're going to apply the uh, competition and give them the benefit, then uh, obviously the subsidy they are paying uh, and how does one then deal with that? So that is again uh, one of the suggestions I have seen is give it to the uh, give it to the uh, intermediary company. There is a uh, specific charge. Uh, there are certain other legacy issues that will come up. Uh, there are regulatory assets. People have not revised their tariffs for a certain period of time, so there are losses that need to be taken care of. All those things, I think, you need to kind of uh, club them together and bring them, and then finally you have to establish a base level. A retail company will not come in and uh, start uh, working in an area unless there is some base level of loss uh, and all the legacy issues have been sorted out. So I think the road 
to this is not very very uh, smooth it is a bumpy road but i am quite clear we can do it and we have done it we have seen uh, the most difficult things happening and the outcomes really justifying uh, that this was the road we had to take and uh, uh, this also reminds me um, uh, mr soni's thing of alice in wonderland there is another quote which uh, is there in alice in wonderland that there is a wise owl standing there uh, sitting on a tree and uh, there are two roads two places where uh, the uh, path leads to and alice is standing there and she asks the wise owl uh, sir where does this road uh, lead to so the wise owl says depends on where you want to go so the question here is i think we all want to go through this path and uh, since we have done all these we have seen the benefits of privatization not necessarily cost reduction but yes improvement in service today nobody talks of uh, uh, any uh, power shutdowns on a long basis and i think one of the best things that can happen is if you don't remember the name of the utility that is supplying power to you that means there is no problem so that's how we used to talk that if people don't know the name of the utility which is supplying power to you means that there are no problems and they are happy with it so let's look at it in a positive way and i am sure uh, there are all these uh, few things that i have highlighted or many complex things they can all get sorted out so from forgetting the name of the utility to actually remembering all the utilities that <laughs> supply power we are trying to move from one end to the other uh, and as mr soni said uh, that you know this change will happen this will eventually happen it's just a matter of time and form uh, but what we really need is a is a champion somebody who will drive this change so uh, you know i would like to ask antonio in in, in the international experience uh who was the main driver that you see who was the main champion for driving pushing this reform through uh in different countries sure before i i get to that uh, uh let me just uh, build on what they said before clearly every country in the energy sector is uh, a unique case so uh, every deregulation or regulation in this sector has to be tailor made and uh, you can take inspiration from other countries but uh, it's difficult uh, to carbon copy actually i would say it's not just difficult uh, it is uh, very dangerous to carbon copy what other countries have done however i would uh, 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 gently disagree with the uh, notion that uh, india is unique certain aspects because we have seen uh, this reform uh, uh, done uh, more or less successfully in countries in regions uh, with uh, uh, users with very high subsidies and still are heavily subsidized uh, countries with uh, take or pay uh, uh, contracts uh, and, and countries were uh, with the high losses so in this respect there are uh, i think uh, you know many examples that uh, you uh, of uh, these uh, uh, reform being done despite uh, this initial situation so uh, you can deal with these issues uh, and uh, there are examples uh, uh, around the world who has been the driving force that's the question right i think that's a, a very good point because uh, i think if we compare uh, uh, europe with the US and Australia and we see that uh, uh, different uh, outcome today as a consequence exactly of the driving force in Europe uh, the European Commission has very strong uh, powers on a number of sectors energy is one of them uh, over the country members uh, so uh, they forced the uh, uh, they basically were the driving force behind this deregulation and have obliged more or less i think it's the, the right word have forced national uh, uh, parliament to pass uh, a reform that was uh, uh, inspired and i would say emulated by the uk reform uh, of the uh, mid 80s so you, the european commission uh, adopted the, the uk regulation and forced on uh, the other countries 
I think that uh, uh, considering what happened with Brexit, the UK was not very grateful <laughs> by that. Maybe they complained that we didn't pay uh, some uh, uh, copyrights <laughs> fees to them. So in Europe, it was the European Commission, and as a consequence, uh, all over Europe, uh, we have now this reform implemented more or less in the same way. US and Australia, they lack a strong uh, regulate, central regulatory body because the states okay. have uh, uh, ultimate regulation powers on energy. So the outcome is, uh, is a patchy similar, landscape. Similar to us. Right. Yeah, very, in, yeah, in a yeah, way, yeah. very similar to yeah. us, yeah. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, from uh, the little I know, India seems much more similar in this respect uh, to uh, the US than Europe. So uh, I would uh, expect in a few years, I mean, over time, of course, the situation will change. But there will be, I guess, a long phase where some states will implement uh, this reform uh, uh, 50, 80, or 100 percent. In other states, uh, probably you will have to wait uh, for much longer, right? That is the, uh, yeah. which I think is an important consideration for business, where you want to place your facility, where you want to have your energy consumption sites as a consequence yeah. of, of, that, of that law. Yeah. No, absolutely right. I think, uh, you know, coupled with the fact that uh, each state is at a different maturity level to implement the scheme, uh, the regulators have to play a central part, and uh, each state has its own regulator. So, you know, somewhere they will have to drive uh, this change. Right now, it's still pending uh, the legislative enactment at the central level. Uh, so, the things have to be seen how they move ahead. Yes. If I may add the 30 seconds, I think that we discuss uh, uh, some of the, uh, the colleagues here said before, but I want to uh, uh, emphasize one point that. Uh, uh, re-regulating uh, or changing the regulation of the overall energy sector is a very complex uh, task that requires uh, a number of things. Uh, in every uh, market uh, that I know, the uh, separation uh, or the segregation, you say, from the content from uh, uh, um, carriage downstream has been the very last step uh, in the process. Before doing that, I would strongly recommend to uh, fix or to regulate uh, or to set uh, a uh, effectively working generation sector to ensure that there is a, 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 an effective grid code both for uh, transmission and distribution and to understand uh, how the tariff system can work uh, uh, without creating uh, arbitrage or uh, a sudden lack of funding for some uh, uh, um, subsidized category. Once you have done that, you can uh, now talk about uh, the separation between in, uh, the dumb bundling in downstream. Absolutely, and, uh, and thanks so much for gently disagreeing with the, with the, with the remark that I made that India is uh, unique. Uh, you know, no, I mean, India is unique, uh, <laughs> but the issues uh, are not. The so, issues are yeah, common. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can take them from other countries. Yeah. No, yeah. So it's very and heartening to know that, yeah. you know, if similar issues have existed elsewhere, so, you know, we can learn from those and implement the scheme. Uh, so having uh, said all this, I think I would uh, open the floor for uh, any questions now. Uh, we have about uh, 15, 15 minutes for question answers. So uh, please go ahead and if... Uh, yeah, uh, hi. so we discussed that the primary uh, purpose for separation of carriage and content is to uh, provide uh, retail consumers with uh, greater quality of service, uh, probably cheaper cost and more options. But uh, as Antonio mentioned that this is uh, governed by, you know, the upstream sectors generation and, and transmission. In uh, in generation side, now we are witnessing large scale integration of renewable energy, which is not steady in nature and by nature it's not base load. Uh, and also in uh, both in generation and transmission side, uh, generally the projects are boot projects and awarded through tariff based bidding. 
So uh, for uh, any distribution company, uh, the generation and transmission costs are locked in. Uh, so in that case, uh, you know, uh, bringing more competition in the market, how, you know, uh, will it not create extra stress for, you know, those distribution companies? Because right now, you know, what we are seeing in the energy market that even existing PPAs are not, you know, being uh, complied with by discoms. So, and many uh, uh, commissioned uh, projects are not uh, either operational and many projects, uh, uh, many plants, they are not running to their full uh, uh, PLF. So as we discussed that, you know, how, uh, who will uh, ensure the compliance uh, of the contracts and, uh, you know, uh, 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 take holistically uh, uh, into account that every player in the market, uh, health of ev every player in the market. No, oh, thank you so much. Uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, before I ask uh, uh, my panelists to answer, two, three things, uh, you know, uh, one, uh, for the existing PPAs, uh, as Mr. Nirla mentioned that, you know, there could be arrangements like an intermediary company, so they're being proposed. Uh, of course, the details uh, would have to be fine-tuned and worked out. Also, in terms of, uh, you know, the new capacity which is coming in, and that's where Antonio, uh, you know, mentioned that, the real cost reduction or efficiencies will arise if we actually are able to, uh, you know, bring competition and efficiencies at the upstream level. So, you know, if, if the generation is competitive, cost efficient, that's where the real efficiencies will come and flow into the retail sector. So, uh, you know, uh, adding to that, sir, would you like to add anything to this? Yeah, certainly. I'll, I'll give one angle of it, that if you really see 80% of the cost of power which reaches the uh, consumer is the generation cost. It's about 15 to 20 percent is the part which is the distribution part. So really if you look at it, how is it that we are going to see the actual cost reduction which you mentioned? When the PPA is fixed and there are certain, as I said, there is a two-part tariff and you have a capacity charge and you have a variable charge. And so I think what will happen and this is something that I foresee, that there will be a reverse pressure created for us to deal with these things. Because there are plants now, uh, 20, 25 years, we've, we've had a fairly mature thermal power project uh, generation system. So there are plants which are getting phased out, new PPAs are coming in. So the question today is, what makes a bankable project? A 20-year-old PPA makes it bankable. But I think even the lenders are now looking at five-year PPAs, because that's probably what is going to come as the norm. And after five years, there's going to be another reset. So. I think what you will see is uh, a kind of reverse pressure being built up by some of these actions where uh, new uh, structures will come in place to replace the old ones. And uh, you will find that eventually if the focus is customer and consumer service, uh, service means quality as well as the, at the uh, cost that can be given which is in terms of competing uh, 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 entities you will find uh, changes coming in. And I think some of these changes we can also see what's, what is the PPA regime outside. As he mentioned, I don't think we are inventing the wheel. There are all these areas certain uh, countries have dealt with. I think a mix of those uh, will be applicable here to how best we can think of doing it. And as I said, uh, we saw privatization also through various stages it has gone through. You saw, you've seen the Delhi model, you've seen the distribution franchisee model. Uh, it has evolved over a period of time and people have become comfortable with uh, dealing with one kind of model which suits us. Same way I think carriage and content separation and how the retail companies and how there will be an intermediary company which will deal with not only PPA but as I said legacy issues, uh, areas dealing with uh, you know uh, even a small thing as switching of consumers from one retail to another retail. I have seen now how do you, how do you look at that. So probably there has to be some lock-in period, there will be local rules which will be made and if, if one consumer is disconnected in one place, how do you ensure that a new entity, he goes to a new entity and gets a, another connection? Uh, how are you going to prevent that? So very good communication systems between the uh, retail companies will be required so that these kind of malpractices don't happen. And we've seen plenty of things. I think uh, we will evolve and there will be certain pressures created from the consumer side, from the uh, generator side uh, to sort out some of these things. That's what I think. Yeah, clearly this is, you know, just not a reform which separates uh, network from supply. 
you know, this actually transforms the way the whole market will function. I mean, it, it, it's a very big bang change, as it is said, you know. Uh, if we have to offer, uh, you know, a choice to consumers, which is meaningful, we have to have choice for the buyers of electricity at uh, the supplier level. So, you know, that will have to be enabled. So, it will happen in, I think, uh, you know, phases, uh, possibly first through an intermediary arrangement and then moving on to more flexibility in terms of sourcing your power. So, uh, possibly that's, uh, I mean, there is no right answer right now, you know, it's all uh, to be worked out, but, you know, what is the next step that we take is the question. Um, with that, uh, is there any other question that we have from the floor? Uh, sir, my question is to Mr. Sony. Uh, when we are talking about retailers coming in uh, for the s consumer side, that would mean it will be the private players who will come there, not the government players there. So in my question, I have one assumption that most of the discoms today facing problems of the accumulated losses in their balance sheets. So when the retailers would come in, all these accumulated losses will go towards the second, which primarily may mean the government uh, part of the discom which will be on the content side how the government sees it to deal this problem the accumulated losses i couldn't get your question yeah, uh, correctly can you yeah, yeah. Uh, so most of the discoms have large accumulated losses in their balance accumulated sheets. losses okay. On that. Okay. 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 Yeah. and retailers okay. would primarily would be interested only towards the uh, uh, the retail side or the current side, not the accumulated losses. Right. And, the regu and the regulatory assets also. Yeah, are regulatory really. assets yes. are also part of that. And of course, the, Mr. Narula will be in a better position to answer, but I would give a very philosophical answer to this. You know, what you expect in short term to happen, we normally overestimate and what can be achieved in long term is underestimated. So, if you just go 10 years back, the you know entire um, canvas is changed all these problems whether we go for carriage and content separation or no separation they have to be handled so so you know and, and everybody is working on it somehow we have to bring in efficiency so that this gets resorted and there is no other way i mean carriage and content will not accentuate this problem is what we have to ensure that when we bring in reform the existing problems are gradually solved so that's how the transition has to be handled that's the answer, yeah, that's good. Um, I would move from philosophy to some kind of a, you know, another area where what I've read is or what I've seen is that uh, there is a concept of an intermediary company and there is a concept of universal charge. So what is happening is that some of these losses, these, uh, um, you see, loss is the, one is the at &C loss. Now that is a division you will have to do between the carriage and content side so the commercial loss goes to one side depending on how high the loss is. So if it is on the high side, then probably it goes to the uh, retail supplier side whose job also becomes to control the losses and reduce the losses. But if, it, if the losses are low, say uh, somewhere in the region of 9% where in uh, part of Tata Power it is there. If you look at the distribution of that uh, or the breakup of that loss, it would be 6% or so in the technical side and 3% or so in the commercial side. So the allocation would go to the uh, distribution side of the business and he would be the one because technical losses reduction are dependent on a different, uh, you know, strategy that, has, that needs to be evolving and the kind of uh, capital expenditure that is required. But coming back to your question, uh, my understanding is that there is a way out and the way out is pull those losses out. If the retailer is going to be saddled with those issues, then these kind of things will not happen. Even in the Delhi model, the... Uh, losses were pulled out and given to uh, another SPV. Uh, certain legacy issues, certain old legal cases, so many things were pulled out and given to a separate. So there is a clean slate process by which you start with and you get more people who are attracted towards, uh, you know, bidding and uh, coming out with, and their, their attention is not uh, taken up by all the old issues. So I think some of the things that you've talked about, like regulatory losses or uh, other kinds of uh, areas where they have not uh, you know, revise their uh, uh, tariffs and other things. Uh, all these things will go to the, under the universal charge concept, it will go to the intermediary company and that will, that company will deal with this along with the PPAs. Yeah. So, uh, you know, some of the issues that we have sort of conveniently parked somewhere else right now, you know, those will have to be dealt with. Uh, as, as Mr. Sony said, that this scheme will not 
accentuate the problem, but it will bring the problems to fore, which will have to be solved in some way or the other. So uh, with that, I think uh, we've uh, almost run out of time. So uh, unless there is any other question, a short question, uh, we'll, we'll just pause here. Uh, so good, thank you. Uh, so so uh, you know, in summary, uh, from international experience, as well as uh, you know, whatever we have seen in the Indian context, uh, the scheme seems to hold a lot of promise. Uh, there are issues, uh, but you know those issues are something which can be dealt with. They have been dealt with uh, internationally, uh, so we can learn from those examples. Uh, the only thing which we need is somebody who's a champion who can drive this change. So we just you know need a driver for this change to be brought about. So with that, uh, I would just uh, conclude this session and thank all the panelists. And to you, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, uh, for the insightful discussions. I think uh, you've actually contributed a lot to the actionable intelligence that we are discussing on this paradigm. Uh, may I please request uh, Sri Rajneesh Daskupta to kindly uh, felicitate the esteemed dignitaries on the dais, please?